Now this is one of my favourite standbys. It's shoulder of lamb, which is to turn into a shredded warm lamb salad with mint and pomegranate. And let me just turn the oven on. Let me get ooh tin out. Turn on the heat. Right, so the lamb gets bunged into the pan to brown. Don't need to add any fat because it's got its own. Lovely. I mean, that's the wonderful thing about shoulder. It's cheaper than leg and not as lean. And I know everyone likes leanness now, but the point is the flavour is in the fat. So all the fat will seep through into the meat, leaving the flavour there, and then the fat just remains in the water I'm going to braise it in. While that's happening, I can do a bit of light chopping. So I've got four shallots here, but you could use a couple of onions. Just don't bother to peel them, just chop them in half. All I want here is for the flavour of these vegetables to go into the water the lamb's going to be cooked in. Likewise, these garlic cloves, no need to peel them, just press with the side of a knife so all their lovely, juicy flavour runs out. And then the carrot just gives wonderful sweetness. So that's... Now, let me just see, I think this is lovely and brown and ready to come out. And then just tumble the vegetables in the pan, in the fat that the lamb's rendered down, and just bobble them about a bit. And now this will both sizzle and smoke. Don't be alarmed. Add salt. Meat that's under salted is vile, so don't be timid. And then lamb back on, this time with the skin side up. Foil on. And then the wonderful thing about this is it's been just a few minutes preparation and now it just gets whopped in the oven, cook it for five hours at a low heat, 12 to 15 hours at an incredibly low heat, whatever, it's in the oven and you just get on with the weekend. This Turkish delight syllabub goes so well with the lamb, which I think has got about two hours left to go. You can make it much further in advance than this if you want, or you can do it at the last minute. I mean, what I love about this is that it goes with this whole weekend style of cooking that the pace suits you. That's sugar. Cointreau, a bit of a weakness for this. I mean, I know that Cointreau doesn't sound exactly Turkish delight-like, but I just happen to have some in the house and I hate going out and buying new ingredients every time I want to cook something else. And actually that kind of aromatic oranginess is perfect. But if you've got another liqueur which you um, bought in a fit of bad taste, use that. Right, lemon. I tend to use two lemons in here, but these are so vast, I get enough juice out of one. And I'm using a sieve, which I wouldn't ordinarily do, simply because the whole point about syllabub is that it's smooth and creamy. I don't want any pulp or pips. I mean, this isn't really texture light, but what it is, it's trying to kind of evoke the sort of aromatic essence without any of that temple aching sweetness and the glutinousness. It's like perfumed cream. Now, I want the sugar to dissolve a bit into the Cointreau and lemon juice before I start adding the cream. So, we finished the pouring part and now we are now moving into the whisking. Double cream. Now, although the cream thickens immediately when you pour it into the liqueur, it will thin as you start whisking. And I should tell you that it does take ages, I'd say a good seven minutes, possibly more, to, to thicken. That's why I use an electric mixer. I mean, you can use a handheld electric one. Unless you want to have a nervous breakdown, I would advise not doing it by hand. Long wait, you see. Now, when the cream looks like it's thickening a bit, just sort of soon, we're going to add the orange flower water and rose water, and this is what gives a sort of Turkish delight aroma. And then just leave it to thicken more. It always seems to occupy sort of some notional territory between liquid and solid. 
that looks about right. When I lift the beaters up, it only just holds a point and kind of flops over. Perfect. For quick taste. Mm. And now, it's just a question of spooning it into the glasses. I like the cream to billow like a sort of alpine heap over the top of the glass. Now, this is so beautiful. Can you see these pistachios I got from a Middle Eastern shop, so they've all been slithered and peeled. Incredibly green. Otherwise, just buy ordinary pistachios and chop them up. Just sprinkle them on top. I mean, frankly, you've got pouring, you've got whisking, you've got sprinkling. I mean, it's not hard to make. And I have to say, not hard at all to eat. The wonderful thing about this pepper and feta salad is that it doesn't need any cooking. And it goes very well either as a starter before the lamb or eaten with it. I used to always you know, do that char grilling and skinning myself of peppers, but these ones from Spain actually taste exactly as if you'd done them yourself. So, you know, the lamb's about to come out of the oven. I can spare the odd two minutes doing this. I really love a few whole blanched almonds. Get Spanish ones if you can as well, because they are better. Final hit of parsley. And that is it. And the lamb has been out of the oven without the foil for about 40 minutes, so should be bearable to the touch. I mean, I have got asbestos hands, but even wimps could manage this. And now, just a question of slicing and shredding it. This is a very good illustration of the fact that so many of the best things coming out of the kitchen are a result of accidents. I first made this because I was doing some slow-cooked lamb with beans, haricot beans, and I burnt them and I wanted to salvage the lamb and so I just came up with this and now I do this a lot and I don't do the one with beans so often. Much better. You could, if you were deft, you know, set about the lamb with a kind of two-fork Chinese waiter crispy duck trick. I, however, might have noticed, am not deft so I just do mauling with a bit of knife work. But the point about this slow cooking is that it makes the lamb so incredibly tender that any way you do it, it's easy falls to pieces. And now I'm going to show you something that could change your life. It's how to get seeds out of a pomegranate without, you know, all that really boring winkling out with pins. Pomegranate, like so. Wooden spoon, like so. And then you just thwack. Look at that. Rain down these lovely beads. Put around the edge for decorative purposes. Now a bit of a squeeze. Now the final touch and real clincher, fresh mint. Mm, just chop this. Mint and pomegranate is a wonderful combination. Egyptian. I mean, how beautiful is that? Oh. And some salt. That's it. You know, the lamb's done, the peppers are done, syllabubs are done. Not one bit of slaving. Yes. 
The Italians do a really delicious salad at Christmas with turkey, chicory and pomegranate seeds. Mm, the Italians like pomegranate too, don't they? Mm-hmm. They do it quite a lot. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Hey. Mm. Mm. What is the alcohol? Masala? No, no. What is it? Pontre. Pontre, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can taste the oranges. 